back for another. I wonder if it's for the ale or the stories. Regardless, last we left off, Flint was in his birthplace of Hill Home to find out why his fellow Hill Dwarves were working with Mountain Dwarves. And the answer made him none too happy. And he was about to leave. That is until the mentally disabled Dwarf Garth walked into the tavern and started to shout at Flint like he was a ghost. Kind of true. And that was because he took Flint to be his older brother, Alamar. It was then that Maldun informed Flint of the sad news that his older brother had died while fixing up some Tewa wagons in Delwa's forge and had suffered a heart attack. This of course got Flint to return to his childhood home and it was a awkward homecoming with his nephew Basalt accusing Flint of not caring about the Fireforge family. Other Fireforge members though informed Flint that Elamar was critical of working with the Tewa but then, if so, what was he doing working for them, Flint wondered. Flint's detective mind started to get suspicious. The next day at Muldoon's, more details came to light and it was then he also found out that his nephew Basalt had started to drink more heavily as he felt guilty for his father, Alamar's death. Flint tried to talk to his nephew, but Basalt would have none of it and went off on Flint, which actually led to a fist fight in which Flint had to knock out his own nephew. Not to one for experience over youth, I guess. Now after that unfortunate incident, Flint got back to his investigation and found out that the Tewa were actually guarding Delwa's forge. But for what reason did they have to guard a forge? So, using his adventuring skills, he snuck in and searched the wagons and found that they had secret compartments for weapons. Garth almost gave him away but Flint managed to scare him away by pretending to be Alamar's ghost. But in the end, a bunch of Tewa drivers did find him and he killed one of them before losing one of his boots in the escape. When he did return home after a day away, he was given Alamar's old boots and told that he had to leave or risk arrest. From there, Flint left for Tobarin, the home of the mountain dwarves to continue to find out the Tewa's true intentions for secretly sending weapons out of the mountain hold. Along the way, a troll attacked our hero and it was to Flint's surprise that it was Basalt who saved him. Thus finding common ground, they both headed to Tobarin. But fearing for Basalt, Flint told him to stay outside as he investigated inside, which turned out to be a good idea as the Tewa captured Flint and jailed him as a spy. This is where the Tewa mage Pitrick comes into the story. Heavily invested in the weapon scheme, he decided to just rid himself of Flint by throwing him into the beast pit. But strangely the captain of the house guard, Perian Cyprium, tried to talk him out of it. For justice sake. Just a note, Perian had turned away many of Pitrick's advances and this was the last straw as how dare she choose a hill dwarf over him, as Pitrick saw it, and ordered both of them thrown into the pit. There, they were met by the carrion crawler, and only managed to get away by accidentally finding their way into Mudhole, the home to a community of dwarves known as the Agar, or Gully Dwarves. Now in case you do not know, Gully Dwarves are one of the least respected races in the world of Kryn and even in adulthood are similar in stature and mindset to children of other races. Their ineffective powers and intelligence making them a target of ridicule and bullying. So how will Flynn and Perian deal with their current predicament? And how will downtrodden gully dwarves play a part in this tale? Find out next time and till next word.